Now, as you know, in Christ Jesus, it's necessary that thoughts uh, be focused mm -hmm. and that they be matured. That a person becomes it becomes capable, and you don't start into the kingdom like this, incidentally, to be able to fasten on something mm -hmm. and to ponder it and think about it, and then that your understanding of it will enlarge. That's kind of a, all, all your lifetime. That's, that's mm -hmm. an objective. Now, to do this, there's, uh, there has to be some common ground among <coughs> God's people that will, that will assist in leading them to the same conclusion. Right. It's not that everybody thinks on something different and they all arrive at the same place. Like some people speak of there are many roads, but they all lead to God. You know, this, well, see, this isn't so. That's right. There has to be, in thinking, there has to be something that's common. Mm -hmm. Amen. In order for us to arrive at the same conclusion. That's just something integral to, the, to sound mindedness. Now the Holy Spirit speaks, there are some words the Holy Spirit uses. I'm not speaking about words like the mm -hmm. and 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 things like this. Certain key, there's a vocabulary, a certain key vocabulary that contains, that has words that contains bodies of thought and reality. Here's what 1 Corinthians 2.13 says. Paul is referring to the manner in which he preached. Which things, these are, these are realities that God has revealed. He's, which things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom <laughs> teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now there is a very weighty spiritual, explaining, Comparing spiritual things to spiritual. It's a very weighty phrase, but some others have spent some time thinking about this. And, and, uh, and it's, here's how it's stated in other ways, all of which have some very, very, very good value. The New American Standard Version says, comparing spiritual thoughts with mm -hmm. spiritual words. Yeah, that, that, that's good. And here's uh, the New International Version, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's good. Here's a new Revised Standard Version. Interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that, that's in, I'm showing this to what a large thought this is. All these things, mm -hmm. in a sense, are in, are in there. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, the Amplifier says, Combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Spirit. Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's good, too. That's kind of the whole thought. There's some things God wants His people to know. Well, that's a mild way of saying it. There are things they must come to know Amen. if they're going to be saved. Because salvation is an economy of knowledge. Yeah. It's a high form of knowledge. It's not just mere intellect. But see, there's a certain way to appropriate this knowledge. It's a certain, certain kind of speech that's used. And there's only certain kind of people that can understand it. Just, that's, the, that's kind of the situation. You've got some things you've got to know and see and understand to be saved, but they've got to be communicated effectively to people who have the same Holy Spirit that yeah. gave the words in the first place. Amen. That's, that's the kind of thing that we're, we're dealing with here. The word, uh, words, that's used in this text, 1 Corinthians 2.13, there's a, a number of different words for words in the Scripture. Some uh, a word is like a, a message or a thought or a body of truth that's communicated. Mm -hmm. It's like the gospel is, in a sense, a word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there's another sense in which word is, a, is something that contains a concept or an idea. It's like, a, it's like an uh, intellectual bucket. That's right. So when you say, even in the world, you say, apple. All right, so this means pretty much the same thing to everybody. What do you mean? Because the, the word contains an idea. Well, that's the kind of word that's used in this text here. It's not in words we speak. It's not like the message we speak, although they does talk about that in other places, but that's not what he's talking about here. He's not saying there, there is a message that the Holy Spirit undergirds, although that is true, but that's not his point here. He's saying there's a vocabulary yeah. mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit uses. And there are people who have the Holy Spirit that can pick up on what this vocabulary is. And suppose as I'm using words that the Holy Spirit will empower. Yes, amen. See, so here's the, 
I wanted to say a few words before this because I've had a, a considerable controversy with a body of people recently about translations and all this, and it's a kind of a hot issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just wanted to share kind of the way I think. I'm not, I'm not seeking to bind this on anybody at all. The, di the difficulty with translating Scripture is you have got to know what the Scripture means before you can do that. Yeah, right. Amen. Because you will never pick up on these words if you just come at it from a linguistic point of view. It's got to be someone who themselves have the spirit and have the understanding because these words are too big and too complex for someone who just has expertise in language yeah, that's right. to transport them over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I could build a pretty strong case on this, but I don't want to get distracted on that, on that point. Now here it enters into what I had said before, that in order for us to think alike, there's got to be some basis to think alike. Uh -huh. Men try and draw up bodies of doctrine to make people think alike. See, mm -hmm. they say this is our creed, or draw it up. But seeing that God, He uses something even more fine than that. He doesn't just use like an outline or a, a, a set of rules and rituals, and this, precepts. They are words that He uses, and that's the type of thing we're talking about here. The word I want to focus on this evening is imagine. This word, imagine, imagination, imaginations, imagining, has almost been wiped out of modern language, of modern versions. Mm -hmm. It's almost been expunged. Mm -hmm. Right or wrong, I'm just making an observation here. Mm -hmm. This word is mentioned 36 times in a Bible, counting the Wycliffe Bible, which is translated in 1385 into English. This word was prominent in that version. Tyndale's Bible, Cloverdale Bible, Bishop's Bible, King James Bible, translated the Bishop's Bible, and the first, the first major translation into English of the English language Bible occurred in 1885 with the English Revised Version. For 500 years, God's people knew what this word meant. For 500 years, preachers preached about what yeah. this word meant. Yeah. For 500 years, commentators wrote about what this word meant. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, mm 